Bond arms. You've probably seen these in the counter at your local sporting goods store and thought, hey, what do I need one of those for? Or, if you're from a snake-infested part of the world like I am, then you looked at them and you said, hey, I know exactly what I need one of those for. But aside from annihilating snakes, and, of course, unfortunately, burglars, these guns are just a ton of fun. Bond Arms offers over 20 calibers, and they sent me three different pistols with five different barrels. You can see here the smorgasbord that I was able to test in these guns, and each one was a little different. Changing calibers is easy, firing them all is fun, and the guns are just built like tanks. What you see here is what's called the Bond Arms Flip. These guns are very durable, and what I was told when I was at the factory is that on the customer service hotline, in the background, they'll hear customers flipping their gun open and closing it just like this. I must admit I had a lot of fun doing it as well. So when it was time to hit the range, the first thing I got around to was the 45 Colt and some shotgun shells. I feel that that's a logical place to start. This is a load here that you'd use for snakes, and this was just a 2.5 inch 410. Also, I threw in a nifty cross draw holster that I would use to tote around the lease in case I come across an unfortunate rattlesnake. Here I wanted to demonstrate the recoil of the gun with 45 Colt. Uh, 45 Colt's not a high pressure cartridge, but nonetheless it doesn't kick at all in this gun really. I mean, the recoil is directed straight back in your hand. As you can see, it's really no big deal to shoot 45 Colt in these guns. Um, here again, I did it again uh, without gloves. And you can see it really doesn't buck too much. All in all, I was very impressed with the recoil mitigation of the gun. Of course, they're uh, big, heavy, and made out of steel, so I'm sure that helps. Also here, I tried to get my cowboy action shooting on and try and reload the gun quickly and get back on target and shoot again, which kind of worked, being as how I've never actually done that before with one of these guns. However, my friend Patrick, who's never shot one of these guns in his life, was able to throw a can up in the air and nail it with some shot, which was pretty cool. Demonstrated here is how you change the barrel on one of these guns, and it's actually no big deal at all. You just uh, pop the barrel up by pressing the release lever, use the included Allen, uh, or excuse me, hex key, remove one screw with that, pull the barrel off, put the new barrel right on there, which is eh, sometimes a little tricky to line up. Push the screw back in, once you get it lined up, I struggled with it a little bit here, but uh, I've seen Amy Graves, a Bond Arms employee, do this in seconds. Once it's lined up, tighten it back in. This is changing from 410.45 to 357.38 Special. And there you go. You essentially have a new gun. So after that, it was time to try and get some more quick draw action in and hone our cowboy action shooting abilities a little more. Here I am with some 45 Colt, I believe. I just uh, reholstered it. My friend and cameraman Patrick tried it. This is his first try. You can see he had a little trouble getting it out of the holster, but nonetheless, it was uh, not too bad. And of course, on subsequent tries, he really got the hang of it and even got the speed reload down okay. You can see here he's pulling some shotgun shells out, putting some new ones in there, and getting right back to it. Of course, I couldn't let that go unanswered, so I had to practice as well. Because you know once you get two young men with pistols like this together, there is inevitably some sort of competition. We both were more or less on equal footing as we had never done this before. Uh, or any cowboy action shooting with derringers or anything like this. Even cross drawing uh, was new to me. So this all precipitated in kind of a makeshift duel here where we both used cross draw holsters to try and outdo each other on a target downrange. Of course, one try wasn't enough, and a rematch was in order. And I had to say, this was a lot of fun, and kind of inspired me to get into a cowboy action match here coming up. Right here, I wanted to demonstrate the, uh, the big magnum buckshot that's nine pellets of number four. The recoil you can see is not that bad. I was able to manage it okay, and uh, to really show how it works, I wanted to do it one-handed. This is not as difficult as you might think. I would say that the 357 Magnum actually kicks more than the buck. And here I pattern it so you can see that from about 15 yards away it makes a pretty good widespread pattern. And of course if you just want to annihilate soda cans or watermelons you can do that as well. Now what you're seeing here is the backup, that's their new model that's uh, got a really cool coated frame on it. It's got a 9mm barrel on it in this picture. 
or excuse me, this video, and we had a lot of fun with that. 9mm doesn't recoil at all in these guns. I mean, it's absolutely nothing. But being as how it is rimless, you do have to use your fingernail to extract the cartridge, which isn't a big deal at all. So as for my final thoughts on Bond Arms guns, if you haven't shot one, why not give one a try? You probably won't find one for rent at your local range, but they've been making them for, well, quite a long time. And I'm sure you'll find someone that has one, especially if you live in a, like I said, snake infested area. They really are cool, and with the calibers out there, they can really accomplish a lot more than you'd think. While I probably personally wouldn't use one as a defensive gun, I have been told that even police officers are reaching towards the backup as a holdout piece. I can see why. It's really compact and it's not going to fail. It's very cool, it's very well balanced. And of course you've got those 20 plus calibers that you can throw on one frame. Barrels are affordable, you can use rimfire, and again, I would recommend these to anybody who just wants something in their collection that's either a snake annihilator or just to bring a smile to their face. This is Alex C with FirearmBlog.com, and thank you again for watching our videos. Please hit that subscribe button and it would really help us out. We appreciate you guys following us here. And for more information, of course, check out the FirearmBlog.com.